So this is a short section in chapter 7 from Forgive Me Not, where the premise is about a young woman. Um, she's 15. Her name's Violetta Chen Samuel. She's Black and Chinese American. And she's from Queens, like myself. And she unfortunately is incarcerated because in juvenile detention because of an accident that um, led to the death of her little sister, unfortunately. And so while this is contemporary and it's kind of modeled on our world, it does have a situation where those who are the victims of the crime, which is her family, can decide what happened. So either she's forgiven, hence the title, or she is choosing she's put in detention for a determinate amount of time, or she is subjected to these things called the trials, which are a form of rehabilitation, AKA restorative justice. Um, so she's learned that she's doing trials, and really it's her family is trying to help her, but not understanding how kind of messed up the system is. So Violetta is talking to her best friend, Callie, um, and she is about to talk to her about a friend and, and just what the results of the trials might be for her. Petra's smile dwindles. In an instant, she's rushing into the main building with the guard following her. I wonder what's going on there. She's my dorm mate, I continue. She's been doing an, I think, endurance trial for nine months. Callie doesn't hide her gas. She covers her mouth for full effect. It's all very Callie. Oh my God. It's like how long it takes to, you know, carry a baby letter. Yeah, I'm not sure what her trial is. She has a bunch of scars and told me she works in a field of thorn bushes. Do you think? I can't finish the thought. My arms tingle from imaginary scrapes. Callie jerks to attention in her seat with a hell no, which is way too loud for the visiting area. Irritated stares from the guards and other visitors land on us. Sorry, my best friend says just as loud, not helping the situation. To me, she continues almost at a whisper. There's no way your family would, what, torture you like that? Besides, maybe, sorry to say, the girl deserved it? Her comments shocks me mute. I accidentally killed my sister, what do I deserve? Shoot, sorry, shoot. Callie grasps for my hands, pulling them close to, near her heart. I didn't mean it like that. I don't know her, but you're my best friend. I just want you to be okay. Like I said, you're horrible at track. I get up from my chair, then sit down again. Standing means the guards will think I'm ready to go, and I'm not. My head pounds. My best friend doesn't believe I can get through the trials. I meant it when I said i do whatever it takes. I ignore the rippling in my stomach because I have got to get through it. You don't believe in me, I ask. Callie's mouth drops open. I didn't mean that. I just mean, considering what you said and what I read, plus your, I'm what? I don't control my voice. Don't be mad. I'm scared for you. That's all. This should have never happened. You know, yeah, I know this should have never happened, but it did. I got drunk, and I said she could ride with me, and I crashed, and she died, and I'm here paying for it. So that's it. If I have to go through the trials, I will. I can handle it, I say. But I need you to believe in me. I have to think my parents want me to get through this, that Vince does, that she would if she were alive. I need every bit of that to make it through, Callie, okay? Okay, Callie says. That was a wonderful excerpt. <laughs> I love it. Um, so as my next question, I want to ask, what inspired you to write this book? So, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, <but laughs> if you go on the YouTube, though, there is this show called Forgive or Forget. And it was hosted by this woman named Mother Love, later Robin Gibbons. I don't know if you know her, Google it. Um, and it was this show where if you did something wrong, you would go on television and say, I did something awful, I'm bringing said person on to apologize to them in front of a live studio audience. And essentially the person could forgive you or not, right? And so if they did, they, they would say, at the, at the end of you telling everything that happened, go to that door. And if the person is there, then they're open for a conversation. 
If they're not, they're going to appear on a screen, which, first chapter, right? Um, and they're going to tell you why they're not there. And so I just was sitting on my couch and were like, well, what if this is how detention worked? And then more specifically, what if this was how juvenile detention worked? And the characters came very, very clearly to me. Like, Violetta and Vince never wavered in who they were. But then the development of the story was really what happened, and then also learning more about criminal justice, and, and then parsing that out in terms of what's real, that makes it into the book, and what I have to create in terms of rules and all those things. And it took me eight years. Like, I started this book in 2014. Uh, and then I sold it in 2020, and then it took two more years of edits before it became that. I see it sinking in for you, like, well? I mean, <laughs> it was worth it. I'm paid later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think, like, forgiveness and how we say, like, sorry, it's yeah. like a never evolving thing. But right. like, sometimes right. I, I think, like, we are kind of, like, never, like, satisfied with something. Like, we expect, like, a specific response at, like, a specific time. Right. And sometimes, like, that doesn't happen. And, like, what if, like, you don't not articulate? And I feel like, for me, like, the, the best parts of the book that really, like, made me connect with the character were the letters. Yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, those letters, you could see what she regrets. Yeah. The memories, mm -hmm. and you can you can like see her more as a woman. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think that doing that activity like that must be really difficult to do. Um, and since you've been like in this business, like publishing, and you have like your whole career in here, like I just want to know what challenged you the most when you were like writing this specific book. I think the biggest challenge was getting Violetta to this full arc. Right? And so I've said this, like, you know, the character arc, it's like, doo -doo, you know, like, falling action, rising action, da 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 da, all that stuff. And for Violetta, I knew where I wanted her to end up. And I'm not obviously going to say what the ending is, but I needed her to be changed, right? And I needed, after you're being pummeled with saying you're wrong, you did this, and da 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 da, I, I wanted her to have some level of agency because I feel like we all have power. And so that's something I've, I've, I've found very interesting, especially like when I've been in the workplace, right? And people will be like, well, I don't have the power you do, Jen, because I'm like very outspoken. And I'm like, see, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> I, I like, we all have power, it just looks different, right? And so I might not have the power to like buy a house, or I might not have the power to say, I'm not gonna work today because I need to pay rent and eat and stuff like that. Or I, I you know, pa pay taxes. And there are things we just do. You know, to and understand that there are consequences for that. But you have power. And I wanted Violetta at the end of the book to have a level of power, even though people felt like she needed to be taught a lesson. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing, because I feel like there's so many great books that look at um, detention, the nonfiction poetry, children's little adult, like all that stuff. And I wanted to look at the system but I also wanted to look at the forgiveness tangent and not just at the whole, because a lot of books might be like, well, they're incidentally put in, right? Like they're actually innocent. But, it, and so you still think the system works. It's just like, oh, the system didn't work in this instance, but it doesn't work actually. And so that question has to be enveloped and allow her to have autonomy and allow her as a 15 year old who, who made a huge mistake to still be a human throughout the book. And so that is hard, you know, like you do this for eight years, your politics change, how you look at things change, the characters develop more, the, my learning about juvenile and criminal justice at large comes into play. And so those things, it changes the book in a way while still grounding it in what I originally intended. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, like the system doesn't like it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't at, at all. And so, but even so, the, the parents of the main character are still thinking to themselves that somehow like not forgiving her, like making her to, to 
go through the trials. So you're gonna like make her a better human. Like it's actually going to work and it's gonna like serve her well. And while that is like realistic in the sense that a father, like my father, will do that. Yes. Um, it's just not how. No, 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 it's not the, be the best approach. Right. And I could see like the family element, like she mostly wants her family to forgive her. Mm -hmm. You know, she wants to go back to that life that she used to have before that mistake. Mm -hmm. And with that said, like why did you decide to like make it a book about like a family, a family that, you know, struggles, a family that is like, that sometimes doesn't know better. Right, that's a great question. And it's funny because I do read reviews. And some people have been like, I just wanted Violetta. I just want to, and I respect it because you're engaging with the book and, and that's what I want, you know? And I'm not offended by that. And at the same time, the book was meant to see both sides. So again, going to that whole, is it guilt, are they guilty or innocent? I also couldn't stay in a juvenile detention system for a whole book. And to the extent, I don't want the reader to either. And, and I want you to see the effects. You get to see someone from the Department of Corrections come into this family at their most vulnerable moment and say, so yeah, you kind of screwed up as parents. I'm here to help you fix it. And this is how you fix it. And they are clamoring to that because they want to believe it because they're like, well, look what happened. Look what happened. We obviously did something. And so that's that level of manipulation. If someone's coming in with stats and saying it's effective, we reduce recidivism, you know, saying all these words, and you're just like, cool, okay. And so he's a politician to an extent, right? He's coming in and he's doing his job and he believes in his job. And he can say, I have stats to prove mm -hmm. that this is. Mm -hmm. But he's leaving something out, right? He's leaving key things out that Violetta and Vincent, as you hear from them, you're like, oh. And as you're experiencing with them, oh, that's, there's more to this. And so I wanted you to kind of see from both ends, because for Violetta, she's dealing with a counselor, and the counselor's telling her, oh, you're great, but is kind of manipulating her as well. And these are two people I don't see as villains. Mm -hmm. I see them as people doing their job. And they don't see themselves as villains, and we work with these folks every day. These people are in office, these, you know, like, they, they're not villains in this kind of, like, good or bad. It's too simplistic. And so that's what I wanted to explore, and I don't think I could have done that just following my letter. You needed to see the family and the fuller effects of how it, it was dealing with it. And also, to an extent, misogyny. Because Vince gets away with a lot of stuff that Violetta doesn't, and he's like, well, if you were better at this, you would get away with it. And it's just like, well, what tools did he get that she didn't get? As firstborn, as cis male, that she does not get. And so, I don't want to beat people over the head and be like, misogyny, da da da, radicalize the babies! Like, I'm not trying to like beat, but I want like at the end of this book, you're coming out like, oh, I'm thinking differently about a lot of things. Um, so that's kind of the angle. Yes. I mean, there, there are a lot of layers to this, and the, different offenses, that's why it took eight the years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can see the complexity, the layers, the story, the characters in it. And it's just so so comforting to see that their relationship with them like shifting and changing depending on, you know, the, what the things they go through. I don't want to get to this. Um, but, you know, throughout the book, now we said that the system is broken and that, that is acknowledged by many characters throughout the book. Right. And now I'm just curious about like what role would your fa or family like play in like trying to like fix the issue? Mm -hmm. Like trying to like maybe like better the system. How could like we actually like make it work? We as people or the people in the book per specific? Well, I mean, can be the book. Because okay. <laughs> I just recommend some abolitionist text, if anything. I know. That's a really, like, broad question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, in the earlier draft, because I do that, there was, like, Bemi was saying she, she puts in a lot of characters, and I tend to do that, and then I have to strip them out. Because people will be like, so what's the... I don't know. I just put them there. <laughs> like, because I'd like five as a number, like, you know. Uh, but then I would have to strip them out. But in an earlier version, I have protesting. 
happening around the detention center. Um, and then I had to strip it out because I didn't know how to actually talk about that. Like to actually talk about the action of protesting around it because then it brings another layer that I thought is important but detracted from what I was trying to say because at no point was anyone going to protest in this book, right? Like, so I had to think about that. Uh, and I think after this, like maybe the parents could understand that the effects of the system are one in which your, your young people are not treated in a good way. And then what can Violetta say to them about her experience and what can other people say? Like when people, when the teens are coming out of this, are they radicalized or are they subdued? Like did the obedience work? Or are they like, you know what, I see it, I'm done. I'm done and I'm gonna fight in it in a way I can. So I think that's a question. And I have a very firm feeling of how Vince and Violetta come out of this, but I also don't want to say it because it kind of yeah. reveals the end. So. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's definitely like a not not a, like a just, like specific like answer. Like it's like it took like the hundreds of years building up to the system like the way that it is right now. Right. So there is no like a two day fix to this. Right. There literally isn't <laughs> unless it really is. Jesus comes down and is like, well, y'all messed up. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta do this all over again. Or the yeah. Lord, I should say, because Jesus is the Lord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, in the meantime, it's, it's good to like have the stories like that actually like teach some kids you know, some empathy, like to see mm -hmm. characters as humans and like to see themselves as humans too. Like not just, right. you know, because pressure, like the pressure to be perfect and like, Comparing right. yourself with people is like really there, and it can be, yeah, it can be dangerous. Yeah, and it doesn't stop. Yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't stop, even when you're in your adulthood and you're doing your experiences and stuff. Like it's not as though you're like, I'm a fully evolved human. I'm good. <laughs> that it doesn't happen. <laughs> like that doesn't. Sorry, kids, but it doesn't. So, <laughs> like, um, spoiler alert. But it's. It's one in which I think when we write for young people, we respect where they're at because we under, we never forget. Mm -hmm. And that's how I want to come to the page for any reader, but especially a younger reader, is that I want to be like, I see you where you're at because you know, at 20, 30, 40, I'm still dealing with a lot of these things and my friends are dealing with these things and we can connect on that level. Um, and I speak to, like we were talking beforehand, like I tend to speak to kids and the same way I speak to someone my age, you know? I don't be like, oh, good I'm like, hey, what's up? How's your day? You're looking upset, what's going on, you know? And it's like that approach, because that's how my family talked to me. It's like, they, you know, they came at me as an adult, like, you should know better, you should da-da-da. And I'm not always, I don't know if that's always the best approach, but I think at least seeing people on the same level is always a good approach. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I, yeah, the way that I put it in practice, I think it works, and I think it, it's a good way to actually approach people. Um, I was going to ask a question, but now I realize it could be a little bit of a spoiler. And it's specifically, <laughs> because, you know, this book is about, like, a reality of a 15-year-old. So it's not, it's not a book about, like, teaching kids how to, how to behave or, like, supposed to be anything like that no, no, no. at all <laughs> it's simply a book for people to read and like maybe cry a little maybe get a little bit of a lot upset. of there's been a lot of crying so then i feel <laughs> weird because people are like where were you emotionally and i'm like i, I can't y'all i detach <laughs> it is, in order to write i yeah. detach but it, it means a lot when people are like it is a it. Be beautifully it is written like book like yeah, said, like yeah. storyline and everything yeah. um so I'm just gonna jump to the other question that I wanted to ask again is, what should we expect next in your journey? As a writer, as a professional? I mean, contractually. <laughs> right, another one. Um, what I am actually doing, because procrastination is real, uh, I am writing another book, but it's kind of like a rom-com. 
I needed a break. <laughs> right? Like sometimes you need a break, like even in the heavy stuff, I was just like, we're reading a lot of correction manuals and like headlines about issues, because like I was doing I'm doing story collections that look at like this. They're also speculative. And so I just wanted to write something lighter. And that's where I'm at. I just needed to yeah. switch gears a little I bit. I think, you know, you really did an amazing job. You really put a lot of thought and layers and like voices into the story. So you <laughs> deserve to write another type of story as well. Or just go on a beach somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Have a cocktail. <laughs>